dreaming. Jamie and the magic touch. Down the hell to skelter faster and faster into cuckoo land. Wordsworth, Wordsworth, following hard behind. Ready for adventure, always there to lend a paw or oh, a hand. Hi, you all right, Michael? You know, you know a lot more of that song than I do. I'd forgotten all of that. Oh, I printed it out beforehand. There oh, we are. Right. So, so Magic didn't ruined. But, yeah, no, yeah. no, no, no. My memory's totally gone, as you remember. But just before we started recording this, I forgot the name of the man who produced all of the Beatles records. And apparently, he's a very famous producer. He he's is, not no, he's quite thick. famous. <laughs> but he hasn't produced the Beatles album in a long time. So, to be fair, all I remember of that tune is uh, J Mayer, J Mayer, no two nights are the same. Yeah, that, and then that, a... that bit was quite sexy in its. No two nights are the same. A little bit in it as well, where I think there's just a bit where they mention two of the characters and then go, and the other characters too. They haven't all been animated yet, I imagine. We're not entirely sure what we're singing. Anyway, hello, everyone. Welcome to Vitriola, a really awful uh, podcast that Michael and I have been doing since we were probably in our late 40s. Yeah, but the good thing about it being awful... It doesn't ruin many people's lives. No, no, no. But those whose lives it does ruin... Oh, it goes through, doesn't it? Cuts oh, yeah. Through. But their lives were ruined anyway. We're here just to help keep the ruination. We are. Pace. Yeah. We're like um, Smith's B-sides, you know, like, I mean, those people like this sort of depressing music based podcast, but we're the really depressing music based podcast. So, you know, we, we're all they've got. We are that moment that Morrissey turns to Johnny Mongo. I thought maybe we could do um, a Scylla Black cover. And Johnny says, I'm just that, off to go and see the the. And Brian that is back. That is what I meant by us being Smith's B sides. We're yeah. just Scylla Black covers <laughs> yeah. that no one wants that made a band split up. Oh, I see. Just because you didn't like the Twinkle cover. Hmm. Anyway, so. I hate the Twinkle cover. I hate it. it Can is, you I, see my ironing board, okay? Yeah, 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 it's really beautiful. Sure. That, that's fine. That's fine. Um, so we should say Vitriola, uh, one, of the Vitriola uh, one of the reasons that we were meant to start with a beautiful rendition, a duet of Jamie the Magic Torch. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we didn't have... lucky, lucky we didn't now. No, 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 because no, it was oh. so beautiful as a solo piece, I thought. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. We uh, last week, Michael got me to do uh, a very moving rendition of the Grange Hill theme tune. Oh, sexy. Well, is... moving. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wrongly, if it was sexy in any way, in the most wrong kind of way, of, of the most very much in a an old abattoir kind of way, sexy, I think. Yeah, yeah. It was abattoir sexy, which is how I've always described it. <laughs> yeah. Abattoir sexy. Yeah. That is, uh, right, said Fred, it's only 20 years away before I'll you. I'll tell you one thing. What's that sexy. hot boy in it's you? Getting... What? He's abattoir <laughs> sexy. <laughs> So what are we so what are we we're going to talk about some of the we've got we've got some theme tune requests by the way just for oh, later on just if you want to think about I mean we can also do uh, our you know rendition you can do your classic rainbow rendition again I might do a cover of my cover of the Grange Hill theme tune just kind of double cover situation um, but we've also had requests for the Sweeney uh, from Matthew Swiss uh, uh, lovely Lorraine Bowen uh, who I last saw at a train station in Hastings uh, she was just going to like you know going getting well, on the train. The- oh right but that's well well Michael, maybe that is the first request then. So for Matthew Smith, a very moving abattoir sexy style version. The Sweeney, come on. The Sweeney. The Sweeney. Put your clothes on, love. It's the Sweeney. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you. I hope that was everything yeah. you didn't expect it to be. Yeah. It certainly yeah. was for me uh, as well. Uh, Lorraine Bowen was after the theme tune for, theme uh, tune for uh, she'd like you to do The Saint as well. I, think I don't really, I don't know the theme tune to The Saint. I think it goes for The Saint. The Saint. The Saint. Put your clothes on, love. It's, it's the Saint. Saint. And of course, the great, uh, the, the A side to Splodgeness Abounds. Many people think Two Pints Log and a Packet of Chris was the A side. Uh, actually, that was a B side. Splodgeness Abounds is A side of their classic. Oh, yeah, two- yeah, you're right. Was uh, Simon Templar, Simon Templar, Simon what? Templar, Simon Templar, Simon Templar, Simon Templar, Simon Templar's really. Oh, is that the theme tune? 
Yeah, so it's that. Do you know what? They've burnt down the abattoir. You are now the abattoir. You are now the ashes of a ghost. In an abattoir. It's abattoir. Worse and worse and worse. Yeah. So we've got, I'll, I'll go through the loads of requests. We've got Button Moon, very much looking forward to that. Um, we I got, got this music based podcast together was Button Moon being the main request. Yeah. Well, you're a big fan of Peter Davison. Oh, that's uh, true. Big fan of Hitchhiker's Guide and Galaxy as well. So Sergeant Dickinson as well. So it's all there. Mm-hmm. Someone hasn't, there. Um, someone hasn't asked me to do my version of the Tinder sticks, uh, doing Jeff Wayne's War of the Worlds. So, uh, for that person, uh, here we are. No, Nathaniel, no, there must be more to life. There has to be a way that we can restore our life. No. Anyway, so there we are. That, that wasn't requested earlier. Uh, and it was me that didn't request that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That came oh, straight through this morning. It. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what music uh, are you going to recommend? Now, you said just pick some CDs off the oh. shelf. For, as we're in lockdown. Uh, some, and, you, and, and we're here in, in lockdown land. We're here to make sure everyone gets a tiny piece of the pie, right? We're making sure every little bit of fairness all around. That's why I thought I'd go for compilation albums. Oh, what Do about you, this? And here is the, the Young Man compilation of the work of Martin Hannett, 1978 Ooh. to 91, I believe. Do you have this album? No, I have got a Martin Hannett um, compilation, but I don't think I've got that one. All right. All right. Here's the big question. You know the way you, you don't like you two? You know the way you hate you two? Yeah. 11 o'clock tick tock. Oh, a, oh yeah. That's a great song. Yeah, actually, Which I don't, I don't hate them anyway. I don't hate anyone anymore. So no. many other people are shouldering that burden of filling themselves with hate. So I am filled with nothing more than love, my friend. Oh, I hope that changes soon. Sounds awful. Uh, anyway, this is one of my favourite uh, compilation albums. You know, it's it's great. It's got his great works. It's got Joy Division, New Order. You know, all that. It's got a song from Under the Floorboards. We all love that. Which is a really beautiful song. Um, I've song. pulled. Um, I've pulled out uh, my vinyl. As you know, I lost uh, about a thousand albums uh, when my house flooded with sewage. Uh, one house had a shit. Yeah, basically, yes. My my, my house defecated inside Your itself. Your house had a Yeah, it was a kind of fico freak poltergeist. That's really what happened. And uh, so the surviving albums, I've pulled some out without even looking beforehand at what they are. So we'll just find out this one. uh, That's uh, a damned album there. I think it's a mid 80s. Oh, no, it's not. It's the 12 inch there. Gigolo. Um, I think that was a gift from uh, Barunko Shaughnessy when I lost my record collection. Uh, Oh, that's nice. Let's see what else I've got in here. I, I'm, oh, this is my pot. We'll eat it. So there we go. There's a classic there. But that's still one oh, of my favorite brilliant. things. And uh, as we talked, of course, on a previous, uh, not that long ago, we talked to one of the vitriolas about uh, our love for the work of Neil Innes. And here, this was bought from Busy Bee Records uh, in Chalton because I, for some reason, have a really pointless memory, which allows me to remember where all my purchases came from. Look at that. Remember, I bought this. In 1999, in Edinburgh, with you. Oh, Avalanche. Oh, look, there's my life story. Twelve reasons why I love you. Anyway, it why turned, I love you. Anyway, it turns out I've looked at what records I pulled out because I didn't check beforehand. They're all the rest of them are just pop will eat itself records. And also this version, I, I bought this from the Record and Tape Exchange in about 1991. Okay. Uh, a slightly soiled version of Station to Station, but I love it anyway. I'm surprised it's only slightly soiled. It's a well. This is what I'm saying. Is it's a good album. Also, compared to the other thousand uh, records, this is slight soiling. The others are covered. Uh, actually, covered. It's um, another compilation. Oh, got that. That's isn't another. Really... Isn't this great? It's Ace Records at uh, compilations, but Pet Projects, the Brian Wilson Productions album, is great. Mainly for Glenn Campbell's "Guess I'm Done," which is one of my all-time favorite songs. It's a great album. And you should buy it. And Robin, if you don't have it, you should buy it. Okay. You should you've already said you have it. Uh, but I've got it. But yeah. So, uh, but it. yeah. So, uh, but if yeah. you haven't got it out there, then you should buy it. Yeah. Um, so, should we go straight uh, over to uh, our first musical guest? Who? Uh, really? I can't believe we've got musical guests. Proper. I know. After Do you know what? Shit, we just done. The audience can't see their faces, but we can. And frankly, both of them are regretting this decision. Just oh, so absolutely. you know. 
But luckily, it's brief. So this is uh, um, this is just what a post-apocalypse old grey whistle test this has turned out to be in our various bunkers. So um, this uh, one of my favourite artists, uh, abs- in fact, got me through an Edinburgh Festival. I think it was about 2007. Uh, one of his albums I just listened to over and over again because it was one of those. Uh, and and uh, so and the latest album is called Guitar Variations and it is available is on. Uh, there it is. It's available on Bandcamp. Yeah. So uh, you can't get I listen to this. now constantly actually it's because it reminds me so much of going to a gig and coming back from a gig as i'm not gigging at the moment i'm still i'm still going to listen to it but Could you just walk around the room then back and forth while he's doing it as if you are going somewhere yeah i'll do my coming back from a gig face of course might not be doing anything for guitar variations ladies and gentlemen please yeah. welcome so glad to have him malcolm I believe it. <laughs> hello malcolm hey hi right how are you I'm great, thank you. I'm good. Are you cold? A wee bit, yeah. Are you cold? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, yeah. I'm just, I didn't, you've got a little hat on. And I've I'm got my worried. fleece on, comfy uh, trousers. Uh, mate, I, uh, thanks, so, thanks so much for being with us. Please play us a lovely tune. Cool, right now? Cool. Yeah, wow. that'd be brilliant. Cool. Uh, this is called Twilight Zone. <laughs> Worse than a successful Scotsman As he writes into his book Jot you down, steal your soul And give you a two-dimensional look He'll turn you into an anecdote Critics take note, this is how you create something you can just write about one song one day. There's a fire in my guitar. There's a fire. Back to you, attack of the claw. Living in the twilight zone Are you following me? Are you in my shoes? Monday morning after a shit Saturday The weather's too bright today And I'm taking it personally Ma, 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 ma Ah, ma, 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 ma. I'm tripping past I'm a mafia of mine You weren't there And now I'm torn Should I go to the skiff in pit and leave? With the old stuff from the shed Should I write a song about fiction? Or maybe just go back to bed to work if you're sleeping you can't pretend to know what's going 
on I can't pretend to work if I'm sleeping Do you know who you are and what's going on? I'm not going to talk to a therapist doesn't exist about my lack of existence I'm not going to talk to a therapist that doesn't exist about my lack of existence solipsism Yes. God, God, brilliant, brilliant. Thanks. Thank yeah. you, Malcolm. That's fantastic. How are you finding it all being whatever it is, whatever terrible situation we're in? Is uh, it very? Is it a creative time for you? Yeah, I'm doing my isolation album. No, it's. Yeah. Uh, I'm getting less work done than ever. I've spoke to more people in the last week than I've spoke to in six months. I've done nothing. Like, nothing. What, yeah. what, what, what yeah. I'm saying is it's no change to my lifestyle whatsoever. Mm. You've Nothing's been putting really up happened. some really lovely pictures of you drinking next to different yeah. bins. One of the great <laughs> things about the fact the council now give you more bins is, yeah. Michael, they're more plastic friends for you, aren't they? They're more little they really kind are. of chatty, you know, you know. non-judgmental friends. Um, Malcolm, would you like to do a second song? I'm not uh, sure. Nah, fuck it. I mean, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. Uh, this is for uh, this is for everyone that's stuck in their house, <laughs> and uh, for all you people that are going out twice a day. Fuck you. Is it? Do, I was thinking. Can I just say something? I was thinking the other day about. Do you think there's loads of folk going out like at two, three in the morning, just quietly walking around to get space? So like big groups of people. Oh, yeah. but, I mean, no. probably. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to have a look later. But, um, anyway, this is a uh, blue plastic bags. The world's going home with blue plastic bags. Six balls of Stella, Jacob's Creek, 25. And you know, there is no shame. Because we're all doing the same. Staying out is the new going out. No one's even coming right. We'll have toy fights in the hall. You're all going home, self-help books. Hidden behind the heat, because you're worried by the lips. And you know there is no shame, because we're all Doing the same, staring at as the new shouting out. We're just trying to find out if there's any truth at all. We are all listening to Dan be shy. We over. Said the good times, now we can't sleep at night. And you know, there is no shame. Because we're all feeling the same. Sing along with sad song. Sing along, sing along. Come on, guys. Sing along with sad song. Sing along, sing along. Sing along with sad song. Sing along, sing along. Sing along with sad song. 
Sing along, sing along. That was pathetic. <laughs> I'll tell, I'll tell you what, the people over there were really good, but the yeah. people over there weren't so good. The people in the middle, they they kind of like, you know, very much... I've only got no, you guys are like in bunk beds, <laughs> from my point of view. Well, but you know what? That is our dream eventually, once eventually, once we can no longer yeah. separately and there's no choice, <laughs> some kind of metallic mattressless bed. By the way, I was thinking it was it was it, 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 Into the Woods was the album. Was that 2005, 2006? Mm. When, that, when that came out, I remember going to the net. Now disappeared, I think, especially, well, at least from Edinburgh, Avalanche Records, yeah. uh, going, going to one and just hearing that, they were playing that and buying that. And when you're doing the Edinburgh Fringe Festival, having a song which opens with Woke Up Again Today, Realised I Hate Myself, My Face is a Disease, is tremendously oh, right. useful for oh, right. dealing with the poor reviews. <laughs> Cool. So glad I could help. That um, was also my first uh, Malcolm Middleton album, and it was you that played it to me while it was in your iPod shuffle, <laughs> and it took you ages to find it. You yeah, just I, kept pro- shuffle, 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 shuffle. Got there in the end, though. It was a Samuel Beckett waiting for Malcolm moment, but yeah, Malcolm was. arrived, unlike <laughs> Godot. So that was a yeah. good thing. Thanks so much for joining us, Malcolm. And the, just quickly Thank say to everyone, who's going, Malcolm stuff is on Bandcamp. Lots of uh, artists at the moment, performing artists, of course, they have no uh, work whatsoever. Uh, in fact, even, whatsoever, when, in fact, this even when this period of isolation ends, isolation ends uh, pretty much all gigs, pretty much have, been all gigs have been cancelled for the next kind of three months. So one of the right. things that we're doing with this show is there's a kind of tip jar under it. And we're trying to collect together as much money as possible, which we're going to share amongst artists who are kind of really up against the wall at the moment. And also some of the venues, the kind of venues that uh, that we play some of the smaller art centers and, and the art centers generally which are going to be uh, facing, facing very very tough times trying to make sure that they can keep people employed there and keep paying their their staff during this time so go and look at the tip jar and we're collecting money and hopefully that means that we'll keep art and things like that going when all of this uh, hopefully is over and gone thanks malcolm well can i just thank say you thank, so much. thank and uh, i wasn't actually going to do like live streaming stuff till the second or third year of coronavirus <laughs> <laughs> It's been great, so thanks for having us, and good luck with the rest of the show. And see you later, Emma. Malcolm, Emma. Malcolm. Thank Oops. you so much. And I love that in, so in, much. Uh, in so David good. Letterman style, so I'm holding the album of the artist, but Guitar Variations, phenomenal record, and you can get it on Bandcamp and all those other places. Oh, well, probably just uh, Bandcamp, now that I think about it. All, all the human don't be angry stuff as well. All of that, everything, just you know, all, all of the, go through the whole kit and caboodle of that stuff. Uh, Michael, what have you, have you been listening to as you have been uh, enforced okay. to stay at home? Okay, Robin, do you really want to have this conversation with me? The answer yeah, is sure. no, you don't. Firstly, this is uh, this is one co- other compilation album. Speaking of Malcolm Middleton. Uh, Worried Noodles, which is David Shrigley's compilation album, which is very well worth getting. Uh, and uh, it's got loads and loads of great artwork in it for starters, but also it's got two discs of really nice, danceable indie like we like. But Robin, you asked me, what have I been listening to? Well, it's a re-release. It's three hours long. And then you put on the Blu-ray, and then all of a sudden it's another three hours long. Uh-huh. It is, of course, the re-release of Marillion's Script for a Jester's Tear five-disc set. Look at your face. Look at your sad face. Never <laughs> have I felt happier to be isolated <laughs> from you. The fact that oh, I don't have That's to what this entire album's about. It's about oh. isolation. It's about heartbreak and addiction and sadness. It is a brilliant yeah. album. But normally I have to put up with actually being with you in a non-isolated situation with you banging on about your isolation. Two We're different weird. versions of Grendel, mate. Two different versions of Grendel. Oh my! Well, that makes up because, of course, Fish was going to be playing Islington Town Hall, wasn't he? I think that that yes, that, that, that gig's been. Uh... You know what? Look, there's my original vinyl copy. Right, right. Just... Yep. Well done, 1984. In case anyone's wondering, uh, I put out uh, tomorrow night we've got Chris Hadfield on and uh, I, I said, anyone got any questions for uh, Chris Hadfield? And uh, Michael's question was, of course, Marillion related for the great Canadian yes, astronaut. Because, explain the background to this. Well, Tim Peake played Kaylee in space and I wanted to know which Marill- which fish era Marillion song Chris Hadfield uh, played in space. And if he did play any of the Hogarth era, well, I just rather just keep his mouth shut. Is that so wrong? 
Okay, well, I'll, let's just... More say, music I... that I've been listening to. The ZZ Top uh, documentary, which is on Netflix. Have you seen it yet? No, I haven't. I was going to watch it today, but I, I haven't yet. What I can very quick say, because uh, is um, Extraordinary with Maeve Higgins, which the lead character is a kind of American-style Chris DeBurr, who's into the black arts. That is a brilliant thing on Netflix as well, so I highly recommend that. But sorry, uh, Michael, yes, so there's, I, I've seen that. What, the whole documentary is great, because it's just... Really sweet it's just three men that really really adore one another it's a really nice sweet documentary but there's a great two great parts in it one is when uh the drummer frank beard says to the documentary maker uh have you tried heroin it's great so he does that so he really, it turns out he really loves heroin the other two part is in 1977 the band zz top hit a peak they just went, we don't know what we're going to do next. We're absolutely massive. We're selling out huge stadiums all over America, and we don't know what to do next. So they decided to take a break. And in that break, Frank Beard, rock and roll thing to do, he went to rehab. Uh, Billy Gibbons just went to live in Europe to hear some European music to get new influences, very rock and roll thing to do. Whereas Dusty Hill got a job at the airport. I love ZZ Top. I will be watching that this evening. I was just yeah. going to mention a, a, a couple of uh, slightly sadder things, by the way. One which is non-music related, which is that the uh, Stuart Gordon's died, who made uh, Reanimator and various other HP oh, Lovecraft yeah. things. Yeah, yeah. And we should also mention uh, Bill Rieflin as well. Uh, Bill Rieflin, yes. who uh, a, a, a great sad. drummer and then keyboardist who who I saw. Uh, I think the lot I, I saw him at the Aylesbury Waterside Theatre where he'd have been playing keyboards uh, for King Crimson, who he was kind of in yeah, on yeah, off, yeah. drummer for King Crimson sometimes. Also Swans, he was in. Uh, he played on the uh, the later REM albums, including Claps Into Now, which I listened to again, and he's such a great final rem album it's a really really good album and it's it's worth watching it so he played with an enormous number of of bands and, and bands like nine inch nails as well and all manner of things and that's the thing is you 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 know to play with them and king crimson and rem and as a, he, he said he didn't even want to be a drummer the trouble was that everyone in his neighborhood that was the one thing the bands were missing so when he was a kid that's why he learned to play drums but go and have a look at his work uh robin hitchcock of course he he, he played with yeah robin yeah hitchcock. yeah yeah. Uh, someone that both Michael and me, uh, you know, really, really love love his work. So that was just a quick thing. I just wanted to say that it's worth. No, I think uh, worth very well said because he's yeah, absolutely brilliant. Just an incredible number of bands that he played with. Yeah, and yeah. I've got to say, that King Crimson, next week we have uh, Jacko from King Crimson on. And uh, that King Crimson gig in the, at the Aylesbury Waterside, it was a kind of warm-up gig. And I don't know that much about them. I've heard some of their stuff. But you know when you go to a gig, and I had no sense of the passing of time. The first half, I went, oh, and I looked and went, that was an hour and three quarters. And there was a, it was like just a normal, like, oh, that must have been about 50 minutes. It is, again, it's a proper kind of shame and spell as you just watch uh, Robert Fripp sitting on his special chair, doing the strange things with his guitar. The, the three drummers at the front and the way that when they were all playing together and they're playing exactly the same thing, it, again, that becomes hallucinatory. There's something about your brain that goes, this isn't quite right. It's as if I'm having, there's something wrong with my eyes. Absolutely beautiful. So uh, anyway. Go and look at uh, all the bands that he played with. Uh, at only 59 years old, so very, very sad that he died. Can you believe that we had Malcolm Middleton and now we're going to have Emma Pollock? I mean, what, you know, that's, it seems like this isolation thing's really worked out for you and me. Yeah, no, it has. It has. Yeah. The, the great thing about people are so bored with nothing to do that mm. as long as we've got somewhere they go, yeah, all right. I'm doing literally, I have no alibis. Everyone's cast iron alibi has been melted down. Well, we've nothing. used the, we're raising money for a charity lie, you know. I mean, we're coining, we're coining this in, right? No. Well, I mean, you will be Malcolm. Uh, I was going to call you Malcolm, Michael. You're, you're, I don't you're, mind you Michael. calling me Malcolm. Do you know fine. what? I can't remember the name of the guy who produced the Beatles, and I've known you for 30 years, and my brain has finally erased. It started erasing you. Like a moment in memento, <laughs> you're slowly drifting away. Oh, no. Back to the future. Um, so <laughs> with Mark, I don't know if we'll have time to do a rendition of Button, Moon and Danger Mouse. Those have been. Uh, Sarah Morgan, by the way, is very hopeful that we're going to do uh, a version of He Used Danger to Send Roses. Mouse powerhouse is that sexy enough well that's definitely cancelled we're definitely not going to be doing that um i was going to mention a couple of bands that you put me on to as well uh william tyler's soundtrack uh first wonderful Cat isn't it 
is William, uh, that, that's on Bandcamp as well. William Tyler, uh, first really cow, uh, really fantastic. Um, the uh, Nova Twins, who Nova Twins are wonderful, and you know, and it has got so horrible now that sometimes you go to. I, I found a few years ago, I'd go to a gig, like I went to see Grace Petrie, I think Dream Nails were on as well, and I realized that I was kind of standing in the area where the parents of the band were standing as well. They've anyone near my age, they had you know. They'd probably given birth to someone who's standing on stage. Oh, and mate, now, that is literally how I know Nova Twins because, because I'm, I'm friends with one of their dads. That is true. Brilliant. That yeah. is. <laughs> and, but now, now I think, I think if, if we, we go, go and see the Nova Twins, we will be standing in the grandparent corner. Now, oh, yeah. Is totally. how, uh, but th that was absolutely fantastic as well. And also, someone, people that, that I haven't been listening to for a while and just through this period, I've been going back old stuff. Shilpa Ray. I really love Shilpa Ray. I don't know if you ever listened to Shilpa Ray. She's absolutely fantastic. And uh, also, a band, I think they're called Tufana or Tufana. Do you know them? Uh, yeah. They've got an album called A Few More Days to Go. They're from Iceland. Uh, they're on one. Little Indian, and uh, I think you will like them. I think if you like the Nova Twins, you'll like them as well. There's kind of a, a, a also it's kind of at times somewhere between Nine Inch Nails and Interpol, and yeah. uh, an Icelandic band, a really really good Icelandic band. Well, Nova Twins are very very danceable rock, and as much, but they're really young, like they're embarrassingly young people with all that young people energy, and it sounds you know sort of like uh, Rage Against the Machine, but better. So, there, I've said it. And uh, I, I think the one I think they've made uh, a proper young person's danceable, angry Me Too generation album, and it's brilliant. But remember, their their group of flight fans won't be like the time where we went to see Daphne and Celeste, and we presumed that we'd be no. the weirdest people in the Daphne and Celeste gig. And Not frankly, even close. No, God, we were way off. We were so no. way off. Um, what a lovely gig that was! In uh, was it brilliant? Uh, yeah, they were really really good up in Finsbury yeah, Park. Lovely. Um, so now, again, someone whose work I, I first knew about 1997, I think it was about 96, 97, um, the, when she was uh, the Delgados. Uh, the, the Delgados are a brilliant band and uh, has done an enormous amount of work right. generally as well in terms of uh, the whole kind of Scottish music scene. And uh, her last album, In Search of Harperfield, I think that was Emma's most recent album. I hope I'm right in saying that, In Search of Harperfield, but that that is a fantastic album. And... Uh, Last time I saw her was at the stand when we were having a drink. So oh, really, uh, brilliant. Yeah, yeah, so it's great to have a, um ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Emma Pollock. <laughs> How you doing, Emma? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you is is this I know everyone's asking this, but it's a weird thing because some kind of artists have I think found this found this first week of everything, this weirdness, that it's stultified and they're not able to create anything. And I think other people are going, oh, hang on a minute. Right. There's nothing else, nothing else. And have suddenly become kind of quite, kind of quite febrile. How are you facing up to that? Well, I think some things have some some things haven't changed at all. I mean, I, I kind of work from home as it is. But um, but now I've got to share the house with uh, with Paul as well. <laughs> he's normally at the studio. Uh, so he's he's now here. And um, and I guess I'm trying not to watch the news anymore. It's it's that's been really tough. Just because I I usually kept up with stuff, because there's been so, there's been stuff to keep up with for for years now that's been felt really important, and now this has just blown everything out of the water. So I'm getting to the point where I'm actually I mean I've been trying to write a new record for a number of years, and it always takes me a long time because I tend to be dreadfully fussy, or at least I think I'm being fussy, um, and I end up just not really moving on as quickly as I plan to. And of course, because we run our own studio, everyone else books in before me, and I and I make that happen. I actually book them in, so it, it actually makes things quite slow <laughs> for me, as well as naturally being very slow. Um, so, kind of more the same, but in a totally different context. Right, brilliant. Well, can we? Uh, um, what are you? What are you gonna? Well, you don't have to tell us what you're gonna sing. You can just sing. You can do whatever you want, ladies and gentlemen. Emma Pollock. Thank you. This is a this is an old song. I mean, I would like to say it's a fairly recent song, but the last record, as Robin said, was uh, 2016 in search of Harperfield, which still feels recent to me, frankly. Uh, but that's probably my age. But this is called Dark Skies. The light we see is from times unknown, but in the place. 
troubles we are shown we are the root we are the branch we are the product of a million chances don't you love the way they dance above you in dark skies they'll twist the sounds up in your mouth so that the words that don't come out right we could be anywhere in this kind of dark oh let's be anyone oh let's be anyone and they gave us a stage to write our own page of history you still call this design now from the only one who knows think who gave the emperor back his clothes Enoch Nodrick and Valley and Glenhead are all reflecting the stars overhead glass the water holds our eye not a movement not a sign of pitching leave me suspended like this while the world does its pitching I like to keep my fairy tales on shelves my goldy locks doesn't need explaining why can't it be just as simple as it looks don't need a sermon to balance these books staring up from the ground as the light it thumbs us you still call this design now from the only one who knows they go give the emperor back his clothes thank you wonderful Thank you. And, you, thank you. and you're going to do a, a second song for us as well? I am. A brand new one, actually. Uh, it hasn't been, well, of course it hasn't been released yet. <laughs> I'm very slow and uh, and it would be difficult at this point. But um, but yes, it's called Black Magnetic. And um, it's, uh, I wrote it when we were allowed to go outside. Um, and I was, it was a year ago, I was down in Rockcliffe and... Um, the, in, in Dumfries and Galloway, I went away to do some writing. And uh, Rockcliffe is a really beautiful spot. When we have a chance, go seek it out. Um, this is called Black Magnetic. It's right about now I should take off my shoes and run into the seas. My skin turns to blue, begging the night to take hold. Begging the night to take hold Offer up its anesthetic Begging the night to take hold Dive into its black magnetic Four girls and their chit chat Four girls are swapping this and that for girls they imagine what good was doing that what good could come could come from that it's right about now i should take off my shoes and run into the seas my skin turns to blue back in the night to take hold I meet her at the hilltop But I hear before I see her Her 
recall sounds like the forest so i cower as i near her but she says hello Ooh, as the dusk reveals a friendly soul and then as quickly it removes her what good was doing that what good was doing that what good could come could come from that i tried about now i should take off my shoes and run into the sea as my skin turns to blue back in the night to take hold Thank you. Thank you very much, Emma. Thank you. Where are the best places for people to go to uh, get hold of, you know, albums and, and music of yours generally? Where's, where's your, have you got a, the, the best to go to? Well, that would probably be the Chemical Underground shop, uh, of course. Um, I imagine. And um, I mean, it hasn't got the first record because um, that that isn't available anymore. But funnily enough, I found I found I found a, a, a whole bunch of them that this is this is called Watch the Fireworks, the first record that came out in 4AD. I found a job lot, I kid you not, being sold on eBay and I bought the lot. And I basically, basically <laughs> I've no idea. I've no idea why they're there. They shouldn't have been there because when people, when record companies scrap records are meant to destroy them and get a certificate. But um, but yeah, I bought the lot, and I'm basically going to be able to just sell them to to people as merch. Otherwise, they would never get that record and CD again. So I'm, I'm probably going to try and set up a, a shop on my own website or something at some point in the future. Can you but put one aside for me? Aside for me? Absolutely, I've got. I will do that. Certainly, yeah. But you other, might not. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. The, the 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 other two records are on Chemical Underground. So yeah, the, the shop. Yeah. The question is. The question is. Do you have more copies of your album than Michael has of copies of the Daphne and Celeste happening. album? I knew it was happening. Malcolm, uh, uh, Michael Emma, was sent. And yeah. last year, my leg exploded. <laughs> you don't need to know why. It just blew up. OK, it actually exploded. And Daphne and Celeste, two very decent people, heard about this terrible thing that happened to me and very kindly sent me a care package, which was... 80 copies of their album. <laughs> Just the one album. <laughs> but you see, yeah. what my image, Michael, is that what they thought was, well, now, was, well, now his legs blow. He'll have to become like old men who used to, you know, former people who've been in the war selling matches out of a little box. You were going to be stood by Lewisham Station with a little box of, hello, sir, Daphne and Celeste albums. There we go. <laughs> two pounds, two pounds, Daphne and Celeste album. My, my leg blew up, sir. Yes, my leg blew up. Daphne and Celeste album, sir. Daphne and Celeste. Um, I've got it on tape. <laughs> I've got whatever format you want. I've got it. Oh, well, they, this is the best episode of Swap Shop we've ever done. So uh, Emma's got a copy of her, and she would like to swap it for any cassettes of Daphne and Celeste. And I, th I think we've got that there. There we go. So thanks very much. Thanks for your swaps. By the way, Emma, uh, this is the second time we've met, because we met about 20 years ago. I met you and John Peel. 
Oh, on, wow. the, on the set of uh, the Jack Doherty show. I remember that. I remember yeah. that. That that was really bonkers. But yeah, it was a mime. We had to do a mime. It was really really weird. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But it but was it, lovely. It was lovely. It was it really was, it was it really was. lovely. I was doing TV warm up for that show, which is probably why the audience were at that level that they were. Uh, but I remember that specifically being one of the best ones. That was great fun. <laughs> Yeah, you did. But I had Peter Andre when I did warm up for that. Yeah. Right. And then one of my nieces at the time was into Peter Andre. And I had to do that embarrassing thing of even then. I felt, you know, I was an old man. But in fact, we were only about 30 at that point. Yeah. Um, yeah. Were, hello. Hello, Peter. Oh, hi, mate. Um, I wonder if I get your autograph is for my niece. And then I took it to her and she went, oh, I'm not into him anymore. Ah, the agony I went through. Oh, you Thanks got it the much, wrong Emma. day of the week. Problem, no problem. Thanks, problem, thanks, problem, thanks very much for inviting Thank you, Emma. Thank you. Cheers. Hopefully see you in Glasgow in a few months' time. Um, and uh, thank you very much for watching this kind of uh, post-apocalypse Top of the Pops. Uh, I feel that I've played the part of Peter Powell. Michael, very much a young Andy Peebles, I think. And I, and I mean, mean that as a compliment, of, obviously. Um, one thing, uh, of all the recommendations, one thing I would recommend anyone, if you now we have every now and again, you go, what am I going to do with my time? I found myself the other day watching a 1975 episode of Summertime Seaside Special with Mike and Bernie Winters, the impressionist Paul Melba, and I think, is it Peter Giordano or something like that. If anyone wants to know why punk needed to happen, an alternative <laughs> comedy needed to happen, watch the 1975 Blackpool Summertime Seaside Special. It is quite a remarkable performance on many levels. Robin, I have one request and one request only right here at the end of Vitriola, the end of the world. And that is for you to sexually sing the classic Thing tuned to Top of the Pops. Uh, which one? Hang on. Do you want me to do oh, the classic one? <laughs> That's enough. That was disgusting. That's Welcome to the remnants of the abattoir. We promised Button Moon next week. I think there's nothing better than doing Button Moon uh, before. Oh, don't, let's, back not, let's, the... let's not do it all in one episode. No, 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 let's no. We've got really to drag this out. Moon to Button Moon. Anyway, if you'd like to see Michael's version of Rainbow or uh, my version of Grain Chill or, or Thomas the Tank, we're on band camp. Yeah, yeah, they, they, they will be released uh, very soon and destroyed humanely almost immediately afterwards. Uh, as I said as well, there is a tip jar on this. If uh, any money that we make from this or tomorrow, mo tomorrow morning, we're doing a show with Sarah Pascoe and Natalie Haynes and Ben Norris. In the evening, we're doing with uh, uh, Jim Bob, JB Morrison, Jim Bob, and uh, also Chris Hadfield and. Uh, uh, Friday, we've got uh, Steve Merchant amongst... Uh, oh, Steve Merchant and Les Dennis together on Friday morning at 10am. Oh, brilliant. That's so nice. I think that will be nice. And as I said, any of the, any of the money we make, uh, we're not taking it. We're going to use it, distribute it to some of the kind of venues that might be... So, so that there are still arts venues after this has happened, that they can keep going. They can keep, you know, uh, employing people. And uh, also for some of the uh, artists who may well have, with three months uh, without work, may well also be up against it. So thank you very much for anything, any tips you give us. Thank you very much, Michael. It was lovely to see you. Thank you very much, Robin. It was really brilliant to see you. And people at home, why not treat yourself to a record? <laughs>